All right, guys, today we are gonna have a look at the calibration tool in Lightroom. So let's head over to Lightroom and take a look at it. All right, so now we are inside of Lightroom and we are in the develop tab and I have just found this color wheel to kind of show you how the calibration tab works. So the calibration tab is the one that we got over here. My auto might look slightly different from yours because this is my workflow, but the calibration tab will be over here somewhere. And why I'm showing you the color wheel is just for an example of showing you how and what the calibration tab does. So what it does is that it draws the colors more together in the red, the green and the blue primary colors. So what that means is that we have the red primary and we can turn that towards the more red or magenta tones and uh, we can also turn them more towards the orange tones. So what that does is if we drag it to the left, you'll see that the color wheel, the colors are more influenced by the magenta tones. And if we drag it to the right, it will be more influenced by the orange tones. And you can see that all the colors kind of change. And that's because these primary colors are in kind of all colors. So when we are calibrating the colors, what we are doing are making the colors more cohesive in terms of dragging it to one or the other side. And the same thing happens if we drag it to the right, put it more towards the green tones or put it more towards the yellow tones for the greens. And the same thing goes for the blues as well. So this will make them more purple and this will make them more teal. Um, then we have the saturations of each of them. And if you can see that we turn up the saturation of the red ones, you can see we get less of the desaturated colors down here and more of the saturated ones up here. And the same thing if we go the other direction, everything becomes more desaturated. And if we do that for all of them, then we just have a very pale palette of colors. So let's just get that back to normal again. What I usually do is never to go that extreme in the calibrations. I usually just go around like the 10 or 20 plus or minus on each side and then I'll do the saturation usually in the same direction or in the opposite direction depending on what I want. If you want that kind of teal and orange look in terms of what you see in movies and all that kind of stuff, a way to do that is to drag the reds towards the oranges and the greens towards the yellows and then the blues towards the teal. So you see that teal and orange look. And what you can do as well is you can uh, increase the saturation of the blues and desaturate them a little bit of the greens and desaturate them, no, saturate them, sorry, on the reds. And then you can see you have this almost perfect color wheel of just orange and blues. But what that will mean for your photo as well is that all the red tones, all the green tones will become more yellow orange and everything else will become more blue and teal. So you'll not have any other colors left in your photo than these two, depending on what colors you have in your photo already. So to show you how that works and how the calibration tool works, I've just chosen three different photos that I'll quickly show you what that means. So we can, for example, just to show you, this is a, a top down shot with the drone from a rice field here in Bali. And if we make that teal and orange look, you can see that we will get only these blue, teal and very orange colors. This does not look natural at all. And as more as we push this towards these colors, you'll see that it's only orange and blue now. There's nothing left that is other colors in this photo. And that could be a style of editing. Personally, that's not something that I would go with, but it is a possibility. You can really do a lot of work with the colors in the calibration tool. But I said again, I'll usually just go with some more subtle changes. So I'll drag it to each, start, uh, each side to see what it looks like and what kind of calibration I'm going for. So this will make the rice field more green and this will make it more towards the orange. And this was shot at sunrise. So I'd probably go about like plus 10 for this and then doing the same thing here. I don't want it to be these um, green colors, so I will drag them more towards the yellows. And of course, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to drag them on either direction. You don't even have to use the calibration tool. This is just to show you what it can do. And then the same thing here. The blue, especially after you've used the two others, might seem a little bit more extreme usually. I like the more teal and orange look of this, but I'll still only go around the 10 for this one at least. And what you can see is it's just done some slight change. If you zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see that it's just become a little bit more orange, a little bit more warm, but it's not a huge difference. 
And what we can do is um, then we can turn up the saturation a little bit. Maybe turn it down for the greens and turn it down for the blues. That's how I just often do it. And it's usually just subtle changes. But as you can see, it's just made a slight change to our colors. And when you continue on to the color grading tab and the HSL tab to adjust your colors, this will have an effect already then, because then you will have more cohesive colors and maybe it'll be easier for you to obtain the kind of colors that you actually want in the end, instead of having so many different colors. Another example could be this other top-down photo. We have, if we turn it to the one on the other side, you can see it kind of influences more here because we have strong blue colors and we have strong green colors in the bottom. So it influences both of those and therefore I'll have both in mind. And I like this, this was shot at sunset. So I like these to be a little bit more warm and these to be a little more blue. So I'll go to the right side on this one and probably around 10 again. Then we'll see for this one, I'll definitely go left because I want this look again and probably go to the left here as well. So it's actually the same thing as we did before. See if I can hit 10 and then we'll definitely want to brighten up. Here actually we'll go a little bit more because I think it looks pretty good with some more saturation. Same thing for this one actually. I'll go in the plus side, maybe just 10 for this one. And same thing for this one. So it's not exactly the same as before. I will just go like this. And then you can see we've brightened up a little bit of the blues up here and also made it's slightly warmer down here. We just made actually a little bit more contrast in the colors because before it was, oh, sorry. Before it was a little bit more green all over. And now we have some yellows in here, some yellows that will come from that sunset feeling that we have as well. And for the last one, I just have this. This was shot at sun, sunrise as well. Don't know why these are all drone, drone photos. This is all by coincidence, actually. The same thing applies here. This is a photo that is very strong in contrast of the shadows and the um, highlights. So this affects it a lot more. I think I would go with these yellow tones for this part. And I'll probably actually go a little bit softer with the greens. And for the blues, we will go to the left again to make it more teal and orange. And just to saturate it, I think I'll saturate this a little bit. And let's see here. Actually, I think I'll desaturate this, probably just around five. And let's go with this one. We'll saturate this a little bit as well. So what you can see here is that we have just, we've actually just increased the saturation a little bit. Some more cohesive colors. And I'm currently working on a preset pack that will come out really soon where I've made, you can see all of these uh, different sections, these different tabs on or in Lightroom that if we go through the calibration, these are some of the different calibration that I usually use. And this is only touching the calibration. So you can kind of see how everything changes a little bit. Sometimes the greens are more orange like here. Sometimes they are more green like here. So you can actually do quite a lot depending on how you go about the sliders. But at the same time, these are very subtle changes. So it doesn't affect a lot in the scene. It just makes the colors a little bit more cohesive as we could see with the color wheel in the beginning. If we go like this, this would be something that we're doing like 10 in this direction, 10 in this direction, then maybe desaturating or like taking the greens a little bit towards the yellows, doing the same thing with this and then desaturating these a little bit and turning them to the left as well. And what you can see is just a slight difference. We've just made these a little bit more cohesive and a little bit less strong uh, overall actually. And we've made the greens over here a little bit warmer. They've got a little bit more yellow in them now. So this is just what the calibration does. It's basically just calibrating your colors for your image so that they're more cohesive and it kind of makes it a personal style as well. I do this 10 plus 10 minus 10 for all of these, depending on the photo, depending on the conditions all the time. And while it is a subtle change, I do feel like it makes a difference for my photos. So that's how I use them. And I hope that gave you a little bit more clarification on how you can use them. Keep an eye out on my preset pack. It'll be a reasonable price, I think. And 
I will put a link in the description as soon as it's available. You can check out my uh, page as well for some free presets in the meantime that I've just put up there. I'll put a link in the description as well for that. And I will just see you in the next video. I really hope this helped you and I want to make it easier for you to understand Lightroom and what these different tabs does and how they work. Not explaining it in a technical way, but just sort of showing you what it does and how I work with it. So really hope you get something out of it and I'll catch you in the next video.